facts, views, and interviews. This is the Andy Caldwell Show. I'd like to welcome you back to the show. My guest, Rob Kreider, owner of Kreider Racing. He's a humor columnist for the Santa Maria Sun. And he's got a new documentary out about his racing career and a, uh, and a race he was involved with. Rob, tell us, how did who came up with the idea of doing the documentary? Well, I did some work with a group called GoRacingTV.com. They ended up uh, using me as a guest host on a show called Speed News for a while. And then the uh, organization, which is called the National Autosport Association, so the acronym is NASA, <clears throat> has nothing to do with firing rockets in the air. It's just a bunch of crazy guys who love uh, car racing. Uh, they came up with this really crazy idea to have a race that's one hour longer than the world's biggest race, which is the 24 Hours of Le Mans in France. They said, you know what, this is America, man. We can do that even better. We'll go one hour longer than the guy as a French do, so uh, bam, they put together this race, and uh, I said, hey, that sounds like something that card racing would be all over, so we decided to go to it, and we were just, uh, we went to it in 2010, and we're just uh, overwhelmed with the enormity of it, because 25 hours of racing is just so difficult to understand and comprehend, you have to deal with nighttime and rain, and you know, 70 cars on the track whizzing by you at 140 miles an hour, it's just insane, so uh, we thought, this is a pretty exciting deal, so the guys from GoRacingTV.com uh, decided they wanted to do uh, work with us on a documentary, and so that was kind of interesting because documentary filmmaking is a very, very meticulous and slow process where racing is a very dynamic and crazy process, so mixing the two together was oftentimes very challenging. You know, you can't bring the car in to add a camera or you, know, you can't adjust the microphone in the car. Once the race starts, it's on like Donkey Kong. You've got to finish the race 25 hours later, so it was hard for us and the documentary filmmakers to kind of find that, that uh, happiness in the middle where we could try to win the race but also film a good movie that they actually would want to you know, put out. So what kind of track is this that you're on? It's called a road course, so it's three miles long. It's got hills and twists and turns, and it goes all over. It's a place called Thunder Hill in Willows, California, about, about an hour and a half north of Sacramento. So is this it's just the out nowhere. It's the middle of nowhere? It's a pri- is it like a private road, and, and, but it's wide enough for the races? And how, do they, how, do, how many races do they have there a year to cover the costs of it? They have events probably daily there, believe wow. it or not. So the motorcycle clubs or car clubs will go, or, or really, really high-end teams will go and, and test. In fact, there's a great book uh, written called The Art of Racing in the Rain, and uh, that book, a lot of it actually takes place at Thunder Hill, and the, and the, the actual uh, the track is named in the book. So. so it has curves and hills, and the average speed is still 140? Uh, yeah, some some parts of the track, depending on the car you're in, you know, we're probably only going about 115 at the end of the straightaway. Uh, a lot of times you're only going about 90, you know, maybe 80 miles an hour through the corners. Uh, some of the faster cars we'll be racing against, like the Porsche GT3, they're probably going about 180 miles an hour at some points. They are flying in there, and so it's multi-class racing. You might have six different types of cars on the track at the same time. So as you're racing as fast as you can in a, in a Nissan Sentra or a Mazda Miata, other cars are passing. You know, there are prototypes that are going by you at you know, ludicrous speeds, and you're trying not to have conflict with each other. Well, there's conflict all night long, and that's what Double Down is really about, is showing that no matter what you do, chances are, you know, in 25 hours and you know, 2,000 miles of racing, something bad will happen. You know, and so how can your team overcome that tragedy and, uh, and, still, and still finish the race and, and then earn a podium finish in the race? How, how, how long does each driver drive? You, it depends on the driver. Uh, they put me in, in the race. They would do a call, something called a triple stint, which is where you stay in the car until it's out of gas, and then they fill it up and they send you back out again, and they fill it up and send you back out again. So you might stay in the car for you know three and a half, four hours sometimes uh, at night, which is very difficult just for your body to withstand that kind of uh, stress. Your eyes get tired. Um, it's hard. So the shortest stint would probably be an hour and a half. It's kind of a tank of gas, and the longer stints are, are multiple times. So we bring the car in for tires or brakes or fuel. We might swap a new driver in to get a fresh driver in there. Now, when you're putting that kind of wear and tear on the vehicle, um, are there a lot of do not finishes? Yeah, tons and tons of do not finishes. A lot of the race car drivers don't even get to race in this race because their buddy wrecks it before they get the chance. <laughs> so there's a lot of teams that break and do not finish. And one of the things we're proud about for our team is we had two cars in the event and we actually blew a motor up during the race and our team took the motor out, put a new one in, and had us back on the track within three hours, so our team finished the race with one car, and then we finished in third place in our class in another car. So for our team, it was an enormous victory to not only be on the podium and get a trophy, but also to 
overcome what shouldn't have been able to be done and blow a motor up and then actually finish the race with that same car like it never even happened. Well, I've only been to a couple of races in my life, and as you know, uh, Alan Johnson Racing's here in Santa Maria, and they're world class. Um, so I went to the NHRA races once, and I had no idea they rebuilt those engines between each uh, segment. Yeah, each I, pass. Those yeah. guys will rebuild those engines in HRA between each pass. I had no idea. Yeah. Every time they go down the track, it's like something like $6,000 or something outrageous. And then plus the fact that they could do it that fast and everybody has a job, even the driver, you know, at least on some of the crews we were watching, the drivers, you know, had a job in rebuilding those engines. And I I was just, uh, I was flabbergasted. I had no idea. And for you to do that, when you had a, a, you must have had a motor with you. So you had, and so what made you think you could replace it and get back in there? What made me think I could do it was the Cry Racing Pit Crew. Now, this is a group of guys you would not want to see in a dark alley. They're basically the kind of people you want to have with you if there was a bar fight. But uh, they're also tough enough that they can essentially, you know, torque a, a wheel with their bare fingers, even though that lug might be 300 degrees. I mean, they are incredibly tough, but they're also super talented. I mean, they can reprogram engine computers, and they know the difference between all kinds of aspects of an engine that I don't even really understand. I mean, I have to go to them for their expertise, and, you know, they didn't hesitate. We, I blew the motor up. We brought the car in. The car was still basically hot and just smoking, and they were already pulling the motor out of it. I mean, there was not even a debate on the team. What are we going to do? It was like, hey, we got a spare motor. Let's get it in, and they were just amazing. And so the documentary shows them. They put a GoPro camera up, and actually the time lapse shows them change that motor out in three hours, and it is so impressive to see the teamwork and the camaraderie and all the, 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 you know, the passion they had for it, and they, 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 they killed it. I mean, it was just it was, it was phenomenal. So and that's why I'm really stoked about the documentary because it really gives them a chance to, to highlight what they did because you know, a lot of times the drivers get a lot of the credit for this stuff, but it's not the driver. I mean, it's the crew that really makes it happen. Now, um, is one of the things that, again, I, I didn't even know this kind of race existed. I, I know that there's endurance races in Baja and other places, but I had not heard about this kind. Um, Is there a hope that this uh, documentary like this will make the sport more popular? Yes, definitely. I know that the uh, National Auto Sports Association, they're, they're, they back the DVD. They're excited about it. I talked to them today, and, and they want to get this kind of exposure to get people to understand that, you know, this can happen. And what's great about this kind of series is that it applies to everyone from the just the entry-level guy like myself who's just got a couple of friends who want to go out and beat up some cars all the way to super high-end teams that actually do compete in the 24 Hours of Daytona or Le Mans. They will come to the 25 Hours of Thunder Hill and race right alongside with us. And so... For us, it's really cool. We get to say, hey, I raced alongside Boris Ed, or I raced alongside you know, Jimmy Johnson, all these guys who actually race in professional series that occasionally will just show up and as we call slum it at the 25-hour. Uh, but uh, in the end, once the green flag drops, man, it's all against, you know, we're all racing for the same thing, which is to, to beat the elements, to beat the clock, and survive the 25. Now, is there any chance this will be picked up by, like, the Speed Network and shown on TV? You know, it's hard to say. You know, I, there may be a chance for that. We may have to re-edit it with some of the, the, the licensing issues that come up with music uh, complicates that kind of thing. Um, I know that uh, there's a couple of cable networks that we're talking to to try to get it on. So we'll see how that goes. We'll, we'll give it our best shot to push it and get it going. So a lot of times uh, there's some deals that go on with those things. A lot of those are purchase times. You may pay $30,000 to get a documentary like this on air. Uh, and so we don't have the budget for that. <laughs> so, well, but but yeah. then you also sometimes own the commercial and can try to sell the DVD during the during this airing, right? Exactly, exactly, exactly. So, you know, we had a lot of people that helped us out that were their high end. So, like, Royal Purple and Nissan Motorsports and Toyota Tires, they did a lot for us to get us this far. And so, we're, you know, we feel lucky that we had this documentary crew there to really document all the things that happened. Okay, Rob, we're going to take a break, but before we do, is this documentary going to be on TV or is it purchase, uh, view online? Do you buy it online? What's the story before we go to the break? Sure, it's you. It's viewable. Uh, basically, be purchased online. You can get it at Amazon.com if you search Kreider Racing Double Down, and you can buy a copy of the DVD. All right, we're going to be back with Rob Kreider, again, humor columnist and uh, guy that does endurance racing and is now the focal point of a full-fledged documentary. You're listening to The Andy Caldwell Show. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.